My name's John Mendez and this is the latest in our how-to's. We're doing a little bit on bow thrusters for you. So on this particular boat, where it's an IPS drive, it has a bow thruster as well. We're going to cover how the bow thruster could be really useful. And if you don't have IPS, that's great because all the bow thruster stuff works on any boat that's fitted with one. So on this particular boat, our first thing we have to do is turn it on. And this has a pair of on buttons, so we push them together and a little light comes on. Turning off is very simple, we just press off. I'm going to turn it back on and then to operate it it's always good to check that it works before you leave the dock so just a little push and you'll just hear it whir in the background and I can just see the bow trying to move a little bit can't go far because we're tied up and then a couple of seconds wait a little push the other way just allows to check the direction is working we don't want to reverse direction from port to starboard quickly try and have a couple of seconds in between it allows the motor to slow and come to a halt before you reverse its direction. Usage, we always want to use a small burst. Occasionally, we might want a long one, but something around that is enough to move the boat with a reasonably powerful bow thruster. And we're using the bow thruster almost as an extra crew person. So a long while ago, we'd have dropped somebody on the dock to assist with berthing if it was difficult conditions. The bow thruster now allows us to control the boat much easier but we want to use short bursts that extends the battery life and it means we're not overusing it and burning it out. So having looked at the basic principles of pushing it in each direction, now we're going to use it to leave the berth. So my commands to the uh, crew member will be just a release of bow. He's stepped ashore now, so he's going to take our spring off and he's going to work his way forward ready with the bow line. And while he's doing that, I've got my transit. I love them. I've got my transit out the side of the boat. So if we start to slide back, there's a bit of current on the bow, I can do a tiny click ahead just to keep my position. And I can just see my transit starting to move, so tiny click just to keep me in position. I'm going to give the release sign. He's giving the bow line a release. He's going to pop that up on the side of the boat so that we're safe. As he walks back down the side of the boat, he'll be then ready with the stern line. I'm still monitoring my transit. Again, we're starting to ease, so just a little click, just to keep the boat wherever I want. As soon as that bow line is safely on board, it'll release the stern. And you can see there's no rush. A little bit of breeze, not a lot today. Thank you. Again, transit's just starting to slip. Tiny click. Just watching again. And what I'll do is, lovely. That tiny click so we maintain. Bow thruster is on. So a nice positive push. Watching that bow come out. That looks like a reasonably nice angle. And then outside engine first, just to make that stern lift. And then both ahead. Really nice and gentle. So our movement is out, outside engine, and then drive. And that just removes us lovely from the dock. No issues, real gentle. So we're just going to use the overhead shot to show you exactly what happens when we bow thrust. Now one of the problems is that people just think it moves the bow, but it, particularly when we're very slow moving, it rotates the whole boat. So you've got to be careful about the stern. So here I'm just going to bow thrust to starboard, and you'll see the bow is going nicely to starboard, and I'm overemphasizing the turn, but we're also seeing that the stern is going to port. So if we were against something and whisking the bow away, we might be making it worse with the stern. I'm going to come back the other way and you'll see straight away it's got to work quite hard to stop that first movement. And I'm using it quite a bit there just to bring the boat back reasonably parallel to its original position. And now we're going to reverse that by pushing to port. And again we can see the stern is going over quite dramatically. So again if I was thrusting the bow away from something, it's a huge danger of hitting it with the stern. As long as you remember that, it's fantastic. But if you forget, you'll give yourself a hell of a scare. The other thing to be really careful of is these little gadgets time out. So it, depending how it's been set up, 
something like five minutes. But if you've come up to the marina and got yourself nicely organised, turned your bow thruster on, and then if your berth's not ready straight away, by the time you go to use it, it will have timed out. So just have that little glance down. Nearly all of them have a light or do a tiny push just so you know what's going on. And you can see there, we've done nearly 90 degrees just from that initial momentum. So just remember, whatever you do might need a little bit of opposite to counteract it. There we go, stationary again. So coming back onto our same berth, I've stood just for visibility, and I'm gonna try and bring it pretty much back onto my transit so that we land in the same place. So key for me is that I want to position the stern of the boat reasonably near the cleat so my crew member can step off at the stern because that's what we want to do because the bow's far too high. We've laid the bow line along the side of the deck ready and then I'm going to use the bow thruster if I need just to keep the bow away from the dock initially because if I bow thrust the bow in, as you'll have seen with our turning there, that makes the stern come out and that means our crew can't get off. So just bringing the boat gently round now. And we're just slowing her down. Going to bow thrust out a little bit, because that's bringing that stern in. Just letting the boat gently roll in. And here she comes now. Just stopping her there. We're actually a fraction of stern of where I want. I'm going to have one little click ahead. Stop on my transit, and you'll see the bow's out a little bit. That's fine. Stop the boat. Ready with the bow thruster. So at the moment, the bow is deliberately too far out. That's fine. I'm happy with that. Looking on my transit with stationary. Just starting to move back on that bit of current. So one tiny click. And then as my crew member's walking along the dock, he's taking that bow line with him. And I will just ease the bow in a fraction just to make that we go just that little pulse just to move the bow across one more that takes the weight of the out of the line allowing him to attach it nice and easily and he's going to give me a little hand signal happy yeah. all secure so we use the bow thruster there just to keep the bow out on the approach let the stern just gently touch Get your boat stopped, I've got my transit, and then we used it to ease the bow back in just to help the crew with the lines. Now if we had a lot more breeze holding us off, we might need a little bit more bow thruster to keep the bow in, but we're still going to need to come in with that slightly stern first. You've got to be so careful of the stern, because it can be quite square, so we're going to land stationary and just at that nice angle. 